You know, Morris, we've done some crazy things on Ignition GT over the last nine years. We, we certainly have. It's been fun, huh? <laughs> it has been fun. Do you remember that time we climbed in the back of the, the boot of the, the Mazda, Mazda 6? 6. Oh, Both word. of us. We're going to start rolling only when we are in, and we're going to, like, pull the boot up to show, ha-ha, lots of space. Okay. And she is freaking okay. big, eh? Okay. <laughs> oh, are you in there? Okay, that wasn't the okay, plan. that's not funny. You know what was funnier for me? <laughs> was jamming you in the front of that Boxster. <laughs> I was yeah. like, earlier we said, I wonder what it'd be like to live inside a Porsche Boxster S. Well, uh, let's find out. <laughs> and that's awesome. I want to be an engine. <laughs> we nearly left you there as well. It was amazing. I fit. Speaking of jamming, do you remember when we shoved you and your sevens rugby mates all in the night tent? Oh, geez, a pirate. <laughs> And we still scrammed against the car and dented the bonnets. Okay, let's not remember that. Yeah. But uh, I suppose we've got to be fair. Not all of the things we've come up with, these wild and wacky, crazy ideas, yeah, sometimes that they're just stupid. Yeah. There's one that stands out. Absolutely. You we know the one. Eh? I know the one you mean, the yeah. Citroen DS5. Geez, we were so enamored <laughs> with that interior. We thought we could te telepathically communicate how wonderful it was. Yeah. <laughs> what only, were we thinking? Not only with each other, but with the public yeah. watching the show. <laughs> That crashed and burned, and, and it brings us back to the car we're in today because this is very much an interior that we are blown away with. Absolutely, but we're going to do this one right. But I feel like I need to dress up getting into <laughs> Peugeot's 3008. Well, it's as if the car is dressed up because it's like wearing this tweed jacket on the, on the doors and on the dash. It's beautiful, and I wonder why has no manufacturer ever done this before? It's beautiful. And it's going to wear well. It's eye cockpit. Yep. The whole way this thing is laid out. Very it's futuristic, just... especially the steering wheel. Yes, it's the small little Peugeot steering wheel that they're using in every car now, yeah. but it's also the shape of it. Yeah, yeah I know it's going to freak people out. We complained before that with a short wheel on like the, the 2A GTR, we couldn't see the instrumentation. Mm. Not a problem for me on this. You're getting rid of the stuff that you never use on the steering wheel. The top and the bottom makes it <laughs> difficult for you to get in and out of the car. They if just you, they yeah. pop that off. If you drive it properly. And I suppose, and it's interesting the way they've squared it off as well. It really is moving towards that iRobot kind of, or F1, as you yeah, mentioned, exactly. steering wheel. The instrumentation, and we spoke about iCock, but and there is such an aeronautical feel to this, which is why we're talking about their sister company, Citroen and the DS, because mm. they've kind of brought through a lot of that. It's really game-changing for Peugeot, yeah. because it's not the safe it's really outlandish exactly yes. if you look at the instrument cluster which they actually call their the heads up display and all the options you have with it and how you can set it up i mean you pay extra for that on an audi their, their uh, virtual cockpit but that's what this is really it's a virtual cockpit but it's so changed it's wonderful but that, that's 12.3 inch yeah then they've got the 8 inch infotainment touchscreen system as well and this is what sets the French apart from all the other manufacturers. This is standard fare, standard yeah. kit, irrespective of which model you're getting. Yeah. That for me is, is amazing. Yeah. And I love these fast buttons. I mean, the little <laughs> chrome dials to get you through the various settings. It's yeah. It does intuitive. take a, a little while to respond, but it is very intuitive. And obviously the screen is touch screen as well, which makes it super easy. Oh, but you had a little button that you uh, oh, discovered. Okay, this is Amplify. I mean, this is, how, this is how crazy this is. So you've got two modes, you've got Relax and you've got Boost. Okay. Now I can completely personalize if I go into Relax mode. Oh, my, cha my chair's gone. Oh, are you feeling that massage? <laughs> I'm getting like, massage. How crazy is this? Yeah. Five different massage modes. You, at the moment, you're on, you're on Cat Ball. Yeah, you can actually kind of feel it. There's Wave, all the different settings but in relax I can set my lighting mode mm -hmm. I can set my ambience it also pipes the sound of the car into the inside of oh, really? you know, into the cockpit I can set my drive how I want what my car sound to of the car it doesn't really sound it doesn't I mean it's a 1.6 okay. turbo we'll get to that now, now. Okay. and then fragrance there are three fragrances I can set the intensity at the moment we've got harmony and wood yeah. and then obviously massage but if I'm feeling like you know I've had a relaxing relaxing day I want to spice things up I go into boost immediately you'll feel a different massage yeah I know it's car, a bit harder yeah the car's now in dynamic mode the mm. lighting has gone into fiery red and then just sort of push the button I can deactivate and the car's back to normal. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It's the car of the future. It really is very, very futuristic. And I mean, you see that throughout the car in all yeah. aspects. Uh, I, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. I mean, what's cool, we've had some competitors where they've all got those charging pads. You're talking yes. about the future yeah. and how connectivity is critical. Yeah. Some of them would only obviously charge Android. This has got the mirror link for Android and obviously Apple CarPlay. Car so yeah. I've plugged it in, it works. It's 
there's my phone. It's, mm. it's amazing. It's got plenty of tech, but space-wise, those back seats look a little bit cramped. I mean, the car is longer than it was before, quite substantial. I think it's 80 millimeters bigger on the, the yeah, wheelbase. Uh, well, important, it's running on its all-new platform that Persia is yeah. using across the range. It's 100 kilograms lighter than the previous yeah. model as well. Yeah. The dimensions have changed. From a boot perspective, I mean, that's critical. Overseas, they don't run with a full spare. That boot is 590 liters, which is yeah, massive. That is huge. We're that's running huge. a full spare, so we don't have that double tray, which, which mm. Persia has always had. But flip the seats forward, quick little release button from the boot, yeah. 1,600 liters. And, and the front seat. Yeah, yeah passenger yeah. seat flips forward too. Mm. Insane. Yeah, and yeah. the roof very usable. Oh, no, no. You see, I love this. I can just sit and play. So, <laughs> You're loving this car. I, I, I love it. I mean, this roof, this roof comes comes standard too. You can open it across the range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that little beeping noise? Exactly. That's let's the lane change. Let's talk about safety. safety. Euro end cap rating, top rating. All the safety stuff on it, lane departure, it even brakes for you up to speeds of 80 k's an hour, mm. uh, 60 kilometers an hour with pedestrians. So this is a super, super safe car. It's got it's got that covered. Let's just talk about the drive quickly. We're going mm. on about this car. Well, you're going on about this car particularly because you're so in love with it. But let's talk about the drive. Actually, very nice, the 1.6 THP. It's an engine that we know, we yep. love, 121 kilowatts, 240 newtons. It rides very nice as well, quite a supple ride. The only thing that I, that I don't like about it is the, the the steering is just a little bit too light for yeah. my liking. Um, I'd like it to be a little bit more weighted, especially it, given that it's a big car. But, it, but it's a it's a really compliant ride. That's what I've enjoyed. I think a lot of manufacturers end up trying to push the sporty look of a car mm. and, and put that into the drive. This is a really supple drive. It's going to going to be suitable to all of our road conditions. And you don't need more power than that. The diesel is coming. Yeah, uh, in December. End, you know, yeah. In, in, end of the year. But I think just to have a simplified range. There's one engine, it's a turbo, we know the turbo, it's a yeah. good engine. They're all autos, there's yeah. no manual coming. And it's a good auto, six speed, it works is. really well. It is, it's excellent. Very, very smooth. Very nice. You know, if I think back to like standout cars, we, we get that question all the time, you drive so many cars, mm. what stands out for you? Yeah. This year, there was one car that blew me away, mm. which was Alfa's Julia. Yeah. I think, in terms of SUV, wow, this is it. Yeah. The last SUV that moved the game forward, I think, was Volvo's XC90 with just the cluster, the way it was laid out. And this is half the price of an XC90. It's, it's <laughs> Which, I don't know, at 500,000 will people buy it? It's still a Peugeot. It starts at 400, and then obviously we're sitting in, in the GT line, which is 500, top spec is 560. Looking at its competitors, it is cheaper then like the Kia Rio, I think you've got way more specification than the Tucson, which doesn't have any of this infotainment stuff. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. So South Africans stop being morons. <laughs> Whatever French issues you had, I mean, that's long gone, man. Yeah. Come on. Look, it does deserve to sell. I mean, yes, we like to do things differently on GT and we've done some wacky stuff. I think Peugeot has really pushed the boat out with this car. Very futuristic, beautifully done, lovely to be inside, but hey, we haven't even spoken about the outside. <laughs> So this is us doing things differently too. A whole insert without getting out the car. So I've got an idea. Why don't we end this with a styling? Good place to start. Good. <laughs> Good place to end. Good place to stop. Good place to start. End. What? You Good. know what I mean. Good place to wrap things up.